Cool. Uh, welcome to GUI and in web browsers. Bi weekly call for 11th of, is it August 2020? Um, yeah, so that's us. Um, and probably, as always, the first one item is me giving an update on pinning services, as always. <laughs> um, so I won't be screen sharing. I will quickly just mention that uh, pinning service API spec uh, been, uh, has been stable for uh, over a week now. Uh, I think we've addressed all the uh, feedback that we've got from pinning services, um, especially from those who will uh, implement it uh, uh, in the first batch and uh, our partners who will land in this web UI interface that we want to ship uh, at some point. Uh, so no breaking changes. Well, no big changes are planned. Uh, there's the one open issue about uh, disambiguating um, those providers fields. So we got this concept of provider hints which uh, aims to mitigate the problem of people behind very restrictive nuts or a strange network topologies when um, peers from the outside are not able to connect to, the, to them. Uh, some people won't have a, a relay set up. We don't have a relays. Uh, that, like relays are not that popular and not enabled by default. So there will be some peers which are behind nuts, corporate nuts. And if that person wants to pin a content, they will send a request to the pinning service using this new API. And the pinning uh, service will probably not have the data behind the CID they want to pin. So it will try to find providers uh, over DHT and BitSwap and stuff like that. And they may find them on DHT, but they won't be able to connect to them due to the network topology. Uh, so we got those provider hints in both uh, uh, pin object and pin status response um, to facilitate situation where uh, someone wants to pin something, they provide known sources. Uh, and then in the response, they get a list of multi others of pinning service uh, nodes, uh, which the client can connect to. And that way pinning service has a direct connection uh, to known source. Um, so that solves the uh, weird uh, nut problem. Uh, the problem is we use providers in both pin object and pin status object, and there was a proposal to disambiguate it. Uh, so in the notes, there's a link to Straupols. Uh, so that's like a perfect bike shed. If you care about how things are named, we, the Straupol is open till Thursday and we'll either open PR or not open PR, depending on, on the results. Uh, so that's my announcement. Um, and the next item on the agenda is uh, changes uh, to web UI. So we will have a new web UI release at some point. Uh, so we had some nice uh, redoings of web welcome screen, connectivity error pages. I think Jessica, do you want to talk about this? Yeah, uh, I can share my screen, maybe. You all disappeared, so that indicates I am successfully sharing my screen. Can you see that? Yes. OK, good. Yes. All right. <laughs> so not a whole, whole lot visually has changed since the last um, set of revisions that, that actually instituted most of these visual changes. But you will note um, that if I disconnect, uh, do, do, do. Oh, come on. Oh, give me a sec. My, I had paused to, uh, anyway, once you disconnect, it no longer shows you the welcome information boxes. Um, ah, crap. This is the worst demo ever. <laughs> No, it's like NPM start was not the last thing in my buffer. So um, I just like, I hit up it and then just like something completely random happened. 
<laughs> which was not what you wanted. All right. So um, idea being that, yeah, there we go. All right. So if you cannot connect to the IPFS API, um, notice that the welcome information that was like, what is IPFS that appeared below no longer appears there. Those three items are themselves um, components that the in the main components directory. Um, so it's totally modular, which means in the case of say, and you have to sort of kit bash this to make it work, but so say I'm connecting, right? So I'm connected to IPFS, I'm in my status page, and then I disconnect, you get this entire guidance here again, um, including the API reset. Um, the API config here. Um, there are also a couple of nice things. Um, the status page will, I'll take this back up. Uh, the status page, if you click on it, you know, if you're like anywhere, you're in files and you click on the up down here, it'll take you straight to the status and it'll have all of the advanced stuff um, expanded, which then you can also go to the API config edit in the settings itself. So it's a lot more intuitive. Um, Raphael fixed uh, a little bit of a bug with this not really expanding correctly. Um, I am about to attempt to fix the issue that if you hit this edit, it should take you all the way up to there. Um, so that'll be another improvement. The other, the only open question on this is uh, whether, so right now, the, the, right now the status screen is the only one if you disconnect suddenly that will, within a reasonable amount of time, throw you an error message. Um, the other ones, if you are if you're connected and then you drop your connection like i'm in files right and i stop it can be a very 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 long time basically um just waiting for me to have to have to refresh or, or go to another page before you actually get that information so the open question on this issue is whether we uh it, it would be as I understand it, nice, but not totally critical to have better detection and refresh on loss of connection so that every page behaves a little bit more closely like that status page if you if you lose your connection. Um, sounds yeah, like that is good suggestion. to have in, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I have a suggestion, just making this like status page could not connect as a component as it already is and being an overlay over on top of everything. Oh, so, that's a thought. That works for every page yep. and every context, and it the result is the same on the status page as you cannot see what's below it. Yeah, to do and it can also play. fix the bandwidth over time, uh, showing up and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, right now it is a component. Um, the, an overlay would be a good way to do it because, like, you absolutely cannot ignore that. That's a good. That's a good call. Um, the detection and refresh. I would need somebody or the detection in addition of the overlay i would need somebody else to do unfortunately that's a little bit outside of outside of uh, my abilities and then also one open question how about we just change this text to read welcome to the future of the internet you are now a valuable part of the distributed web as much as i feel like a revolutionary maybe we should maybe we should tone that down a little bit Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Anybody have any objections to me just thrown in in PR 1577 and not, not opening an entire PR for dumbing down the revolution text? <laughs> we are I just feel like as a friendly. user, yeah, as a user, there's so much thing to look at. I don't look at anywhere, you know yeah. what I mean? Like there's yeah. so much text and yeah. stuff going on. Maybe yeah. we can like, uh, make something more obvious to the user, like start using files, start messing around here so the user can learn. Well, I, that's, the, that's the content of the in this app you can box that has all of the basically just explanatory links to the status files, explore peer settings. So those are there. But, um, but yeah, we, we may want to talk about dressing this page out a little bit more heavily in the future. Um, I will I will fix the um, the internal link problem um, to take people down to the API picker on settings, and then I will kick that over to you, Lytle, if you have time to play with the detection logic. Um, if not, we'll have something that we can at least include in 2.11. 
Yeah, sounds good. Speaking about 211, <laughs> let me share my screen. Uh, pa -pa -pa. Can you see my screen? Yes. Cool. Uh, yep. So uh, just sort of like a to get a feeling of the land, I created a milestone for 211. And because uh, basically we wanted to like cut this release this week. And then I re realized, like, try to figure it out what needs to happen to avoid painful regressions, which will make people open issues and then uh, block uh, uh, our precious time. So um, I created this milestone and included uh, open PR by Irakli, which <laughs> I really will review today. Um, it's uh, uh, Irakli already rebased, um, rebased, refactored entire uh, web UI on uh, top of uh, IPFS provider and the new uh, API, which is async await. And we already included the welcome page, which uh, most of it uh, Jessica showed. Um, so we want to finalize those um, messaging improvements, uh, which uh, Jessica just showed. And what remains is basically a bunch of issues which are related to use cases when people are connecting to a remote node. So people are not connecting to a local host node or not, um, they are not loading web UI from the API port. They may be loading it from the uh, gateway port. They set up proper course headers and they use a re either like local host or local network LAN, maybe over VPN. Please don't expose your API port to the internet. Uh, I assume those people had the basic auth or some other means of protecting their API. But uh, we got a bunch, probably that's not the full list. I've added them to the milestone. Uh, but those like marked as bug and related to gateway port or API port, um, everything is, the, like a bunch of those issues will probably be closed by a single PR where we uh, refine the way one, how we find the API when it's not found on the default port or it's not uh, provided through like by user through that input that we have in the interface. Uh, the edge cases are when API is on uh, catch all IP, which is for zeros. Uh, that's problematic because web browsers interpret that as a local host. Um, they, if you, if, I, if web UI assumes gateway port is at four zeros, um, images embedded or uh, links to the gateway in web UI will be interpreted by the web browser by uh, as a resource on the local machine instead of uh, that remote node that a person connected to. Um, so we need to, we need to uh, create um, improved heuristic. Uh, Iraqli already switched uh, web UI from, um, from that uh, Redux bundle to IPFS provider, which by default tries, um, if, if no API address is provided, it will try to access API on the current origin, if I remember correctly. We, it used to do that before too, by the way, it's that logic yeah. didn't change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's the very basic logic, uh, which guaranteed that if a person changed the default API port and uh, web UI was loaded from the gateway port, it would automatically work because it tried the same origin as uh, the web UI itself was loaded. Um, so we probably need to improve that. I'm not sure if it's in IPFS provider or it will be in the user land in the web UI itself uh, to handle those additional use cases where there is either um, uh, that, that catch all uh, four zeros in Go IPFS configuration and the user loaded 
uh, web UI from one origin and we is trying to access uh, API at the different origin. Uh, but a bunch of those issues I'm sharing right now uh, will be closed uh, if we uh, simplify that logic. I also like reopened one issue where we in uh, IPLD Explorer, we have this link to view on the IPFS gateway. Um, and it was like pointing at the local host or something and we changed that to point at the public gateway because most of people will have IPFS companions. So assumption was that will redirect to a local gateway. But the problem is like, uh, there are folks which are not running companion and there are use cases where people uh, are using web UI uh, and IPFS node in an offline mode. So they are not connected to the swarm. And that means the public gateway at IPFS IO would not be able to load the content they had, have locally. Um, that's why we cannot rely on the public gateways in web UI interfaces. And we need to introduce so, sort of like a heuristic to find uh, the API port and find the gateway port, uh, like the gateway origin from to be used in our interfaces. Uh, that's really like a long story, but the gist here is um, apart from the user interface improvements and uh, performance improvements uh, by Veracli, we have the only issue we have is this use case where uh, people are using uh, API port at a remote origin. Um, and we need to tackle that before cutting the release bef because that would like introduce a bunch of regressions. Uh, people seem to use web UI for they switch between different uh, nodes or maybe they run it in a local uh, VPN or LAN. Um, but that's something we need to tackle before making a release. Uh, if um, you feel there's something that we've missed and it should be added, feel free to just like add the issues to this milestone so we don't miss it. But those related to API and gateway, gateway ports are effectively just one issue. I, I just like did not do a proper triage and uh, did not merge them. Um, can I have, make a note about the one of the issues that are part of the milestone. Yep. So the buffering issues that is to not buffer files while we add them to the IPFS. Uh, while there's a pull request, it's actually awaiting on the JS IPFS release to be cut uh, because uh, some of the changes that fixes it on IPFS side has not been released in the previous version. So we need to wait for a version to actually be able to take advantage of it. That being said, we can land the change and it just won't fix it. But once it is fixed, then it will be. What I'm trying to say, I think it would be nice if we can time it with JS IPFS release so we can take advantage of that, which I think should be sometime this week. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's like within this and next week, right? Um, I believe it should be this week, but yeah. Alexis probably wants yeah, to. Yeah. I don't think it's like, even if it does not happen for some reason, it's, it's not a problem. I think the, the, the most important part was already merged, the, the async refactor that you have uh, did. Uh, this switch to um, uh, HTTP client with performance improvements, uh, sort of like a, maybe not deadline, but the, the window that we want to align it is when we merge uh, the feature branch with pinning services. Um, that's sort of like uh, solved deadline uh, for, for those improvements to land. We want to uh, either land uh, performance improvements before or with that. So it's not uh, a big problem if uh, JSIPFS did not, uh, like, do not release on time. We may cut a release of WebUI without that and uh, do that later, but it would be nice to, like, the sooner the better. Cool, that was me checking the agenda. Uh, we are at the end of the agenda, so last uh, occasion to grow it <laughs> at your own uh, items. I will go quickly over highlights. Um, we've been busy with um, a backlog of issues and other stuff, so uh, not very eventful week, but uh, we've released new uh, ISIPFS library. Maybe I'll share my screen just so. People don't stare at me. People will stare at 
my notes <laughs> instead. Uh, so inside IPFS, it's a very simple library which is used by JS IPFS and a bunch of other stuff uh, just to like detect uh, IPFS resources on the web. And uh, this is a major release because we removed dependency of nodes buffers and now we uh, are sort of like web native uh, in that that we don't uh, introduce uh, dependency on any node specific uh, types. Um, so that really is landed. Um, and we had a bunch of deprecations. So one of uh, key deprecations is uh, saying goodbye to IPFS Redux bundle, which was used only by IPFS Web UI and I believe um, IPFS Explorer uh, websites. Uh, and maybe that uh, proof of concept that we had uh, at share IPFS IO, um, but that's about it. Uh, since then we've created a framework agnostic IPFS provider. So IPFS Redux bundle makes a bunch of assumptions and it's probably most useful uh, in, in React and Redux uh, environments. IPFS provider is something you can use uh, no matter which framework you choose and it's more flexible you can build arbitrary uh, fallback uh, logic. Uh, you are able to uh, lazy load uh, either uh, JS IPFS, the full node, or JS IPFS HTTP client. I believe a Tiddly Wiki plugin, uh, which uh, supports IPFS, is using IPFS provider for uh, lazy loading, uh, and it's lazy loading HTTP client. Um, and more and more projects, including uh, Web UI, uh, is now depending on uh, IPFS provider. So it's good we are dog fooding that. And the second uh, deprecation is not really uh, done by us, but uh, Alex from uh, JS IPFS did that. Uh, but it's something that we use and will probably have to remove uh, over time from our, our projects. Uh, we had this uh, split. We had two NPM packages. One was Go IPFS, which was uh, when it was globally installed, it provided you with IPFS command on the command line. And it was just like go IPFS release uh, that you could install uh, over NPM. And we had a second pa package called uh, go IPFS dev, which, um, which was used in a dependency context. So if your project was running tests against uh, IPFS, but you did not want to like install it globally or something, uh, that package uh, included uh, Go IPFS binary in your node uh, modules uh, subdirectory. So Alex uh, unified, uh, like he backported all the features from Go IPFS dev, namely the ability to find the path to the binary. And now that's uh, provided by the Go IPFS package. Uh, and that means uh, Go IPFS dev is uh, deprecated uh, if you want to include Go IPFS in your project, uh, use uh, just Go IPFS, um, use IPFS provider. I don't believe, yeah, Redux bundle sh soon, soon or currently being deprecated and uh, Go IPFS dev is also like deprecated. Um, I believe we also deprecated them on NPM, but it's worth mentioning here in case someone is using them. Uh, right, folks, that's all my highlights. Hopefully, in when we meet in the two weeks, we'll have web UI release, compiler release, or desktop release, whatever. We'll release a bunch of stuff, so stay tuned. Um, any last uh, second topics before we free up our half an hour? Um, I, I want to bring something up. Um, so I, as I've been trying to refactor a bunch of things, I keep running into things that I find somewhat unclear what's happening in web UI. Uh, and I got myself into trying to refactor uh, some of the logics there. Uh, and I could use some help in trying to check my assumptions, whether what I interpret as my interpretations of things are actually correct. Uh, so 
can you, one of you please help me? Maybe you can uh, schedule an hour or so, so we can go through everything uh, and try to make sure that it is the case. And if I shouldn't be doing that, that's also another thing. Maybe you should tell me that stop doing this. Uh, yeah, I honestly would uh, like to have like an hour, ideally with uh, me, Rafael, you, and maybe Oli or Hack. Uh, and I'd like to like include them uh, because they were from the beginning of the project and they may be more familiar what some decisions were made. Um, if you are able like to schedule something this week or uh, or maybe later uh, with most of us, I'm happy to join. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'll schedule a meeting then, uh, or I'll try. I'm not sure about people's availability. I, I might have, it may not be this week because I want to have a proposal at hand so I can actually go through it and then I'll do that. Yeah, sounds good. Right, folks, I won't keep you around for much longer. Uh, see you in two weeks. Thank you for joining. Uh, fingers crossed for all our real upcoming, upcoming releases to go smoothly. See you in two weeks. Bye. Two.